Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we're going to go over fundamentals of mapping tables. Mapping tables are essentially lookup tables. And as a ClickSense developer, you're going to use mapping table quite frequently in your development. Let's look at some of the important rules when you create a mapping table. So it starts with key value pair. Mapping table always has two fields. First field is the key field and the second is the attribute field. Now the order of the field is important, so when you create a mapping table load, the first field has to be a key field, otherwise it will not work. And the second field is always an attribute field. Now if you have a composite key, you're allowed to create a composite key in the mapping load. Now it may sound strange, but the field names and essentially the key field names are not relevant. So when you create a mapping table, you essentially apply that mapping load or mapping table to the target table and that is essentially a fact table. So when you use the uh, mapping table load, you're mapping a key field from the mapping load over to the key field in the fact table. And even though the key fields are required in both tables, the names are not important since when you use apply map function in the fact table, the key field will implicitly map to the key field in the mapping table. And that is why the order of the field in the mapping table is important. Now this syntax is strict when you create a mapping table and when you use apply map, you have to make sure that you enclose the table name within single quotes. Otherwise, mapping table load will fail silently. And one of the major advantages of using mapping table concept is that once the mapping is applied, the table will get dropped implicitly. So you don't have to drop mapping table manually. That helps clean up your data model since you do not need mapping table after the mapping gets applied to the fact table. So these are six important core rules that you need to understand and use while you create a mapping table. Now let's look at some of the examples. So the first step is always to create a mapping load. As you see, the mapping load has mapping prefix to the load statement. First field is always a key field. In this case, it's product ID. And the second field is an attribute or value field, and that is unit price. And the SQL syntax is similar to regular load statement. Now, once the mapping load table gets created, and it has to exist before you apply that to the target table. Now, in this case, we're using the product map has been enclosed in a single code. And the second parameter is the key field. Now in this case, the key field is matching between the orders detail and products map, but you don't necessarily have to have same name. The reason being is that even if the key field name in the order table was different than the key field in the products map, since products map or the mapping table requires that the key field is the first field, implicitly the field from the target table will get mapped to the first field in the mapping load. And if the value matches, then the, the row will get fetched into the fact table. So that's a quick recap of mapping table. It's one of my favorite concepts since it allows you to create mapping table for the sole purpose of lookup values. And once the field gets added to the target table, the mapping table gets dropped implicitly. So that's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next lecture.